Okay, chat. Uh, let's uh, continue with our final thoughts. So, Radical Dreamers is a pretty short game. I mean, even with me narrating everything, we clocked in under four hours. We didn't get every possible ending. We saw a game over, and we saw what I'm assuming is the good ending, question mark. Uh, based off of the text adventure of us breaking into a manor and slowly getting to learn more about Kid, who is a very greedy thief, and Majil, who we suspect to be related to Chrono Trigger, and I guess we'll leave it a bit more elusive there. But I think overall, like, the game was okay. I would say for its length, it like, if for those that are curious, maybe it would be worth playing, but it's not like... It's not going to necessarily answer things that I think people probably want if they're, like, a big fan of Chrono Trigger. Like, honestly, like, we got, like, a little bit of uh, backstory to, like, what happens to uh, Luca in the canonical ending versus the many endings of Chrono Trigger. So I guess those that are interested can learn more about that. And maybe technically a little bit about uh, some of the other characters, too. But I think for the most part, it's a self-contained story. It takes place an unknown number of years after the main story. So I feel like if you're looking for, like, you know, oh, what specifically happened with Chrono? Or, you know, what, what happened to Robo? Or anything like that. They don't really go into any of that at all. So it's kind of disappointing, I guess, in that sense. I would say from my standpoint, I will say, though... The characters are psychotic. <laughs> it's not like a big spoiler. Like there's something not quite right with them. I, I think our character being like the biggest simp of all time is like really uncomfortable to be honest with you. When he's not like almost hitting on a character or too afraid to speak his mind or is like literally so whipped that he just like, like I stood up to her or at least I did in my mind. Like that was like an almost literal quote in the game was so bad. So I don't know if you were supposed to like most of the characters to be honest with you. I was kind of rooting for the monsters at one point. Uh, it was nice to see different kinds of monsters, I guess. And they handled some turn-based combat in a text adventure thing. I didn't like that there was like a timer in the combat, at least from like a streaming perspective where I'm reading things out loud as you have to decide whether to like observe or fight or try to run. And it seems like there's like a relationship meter to some extent where gradually over time we can make Kid like us. But yeah, I don't know. The characters were not super likable. I like some of the people we interacted with though. I guess Majil was probably my favorite character, the 30-year-old man traveling with a 17-year-old thief for some reason. They never really elaborate, honestly, in the story. Maybe there's some options that lead to optional details, but in the, like, the main story, start to finish, it is not really brought up. You can make some assumptions based off of things, in particular the Chrono Trigger DS game extra content, but... Again, it's not it's not going to be a very satisfying conclusion, I think, for people looking for Chrono Trigger. So if you're curious, it doesn't take very long to do. I wouldn't go out of my way to like pay a lot for it either. It's a pretty simple game. Uh, despite being a text adventure from 1996, it is accompanied by images, at least to some extent, of like the major scenes to kind of pull you into it a little more. And at least the text updates if you've been to a location so you don't have to memorize the rooms once you've been to them. Uh, we did some backtracking for some quests, uh, but otherwise the game just all takes place within the initial place that you go into. So I think I don't really have too much else to say. I think the music worked for its short soundtrack. It's not something I'm going to be like listening to a lot outside the stream, but I think it set like the tone correctly for the game itself. And uh, the sound effects were okay. Vigil was the least awful. That That is a good way to phrase it. Yeah, in terms of personality, these were definitely some of the worst characters. I don't know if you're supposed to find them endearing, but they just felt kind of terrible. Yeah, like, even without going into spoilers, Kid is, like, throwing out a lot of Australian and British slang while basically murdering people with knives. It's very... It's very off-putting, to say the least, while also being, like, kind of greedy and other things. Like, genuinely, this character is not a good character. 
So, I think with that, I, I've hit the end of what I could talk about with that. going into spoilers. This is it before. It's a short game. So, I, I'll keep the review probably short as well here. So, us, us kind of piloting Surge around and going into the different rooms. We, we got, like, very vague hints as to things that happened, like the Acacian Signet says like the guy that was in the prison was related to the dragoons we had kind of still an ambiguous relationship between this game and chrono trigger more specifically where the blonde haired kid from the end of the true ending of chrono trigger um basically goes through and grows up and luca dies running an orphanage and leaves her a time egg and we use the time egg to save ourselves in the ending that we saw kind of things so there's some throughput from the older versions, or older Chrono Trigger, I guess you could say. The DS version definitely links it a little better to this game. But overall, this still doesn't have, like, a ton to do with it. It talked a little bit about uh, the Frozen Flame uh, being connected to Lavos, so that's something we'll kind of keep in mind to see if that comes up again. And uh, Chrono Cross itself as we stream forward in the series. Um... Aside from that, though, it feels kind of like, aside from, like, maybe 20 to 30 minutes of dialogue, they honestly could have replaced, like, one or two things, and it would have, like, basically zero relationship with the Chrono Trigger. Again, like, there, it, it's kind of, like, tangentially related. This game brings up a lot of themes and concepts of, like, another world or, like, alternate people, where Kid is basically going through her memories, whatever that means, in order to live out her lives in multiple corridors so it's suggesting i guess parallel universes to some extent so there's a lot that's more kind of hinted at as opposed to directly told and we weren't shown a ton either in general so we kind of have to just kind of guess that i think it was related to shala i couldn't tell if it was like a direct relative of Shala, or literally Shala, or like a different version of it. I'm assuming it was Shala. Maybe. The way it was framed to kind of link it to the DS game, it felt like it was implying that Shala was like regretting life. And then the whole talk about like some dreams are not meant to come true with Chrono Trigger's Dream Devourer being kind of a thing. Kind of implies that. I don't know how much of that they will change. As I don't, this game is like official yet not official in the timeline where they expanded upon a lot of ideas in the next game that we're about to play. But it's possible that this game is still canon technically because there are alternate dimensions. So at least we should be able to take away themes from this if we want to go into Chrono Cross. So for people looking to play between the games... I, as I said before, I don't think you're going to get a lot out of it. The characters are not, like, super likable. In fact, it's almost, like, hilarious how terrible they are to different things that we come across. Um, But, yeah, aside from that, not, not too much to really say there. Not too much to really spoil, I guess. It's not a super long game. So try it if you're curious, I suppose. But I think for now, chat, we're going to say goodbye to Radical Dreamers and our final thoughts. If there's anything you want to add, your thoughts and feelings as we went through. We did have, like, a very long text dump at the end, which is to be expected in a text adventure game, where it tried to tie it in a little more with Chrono Trigger, and I'm like, eh. I'm like, eh. So I guess we'll see where it goes. But anyway, uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. anything else worth mentioning other than us being the super simp? Yeah, it kind of felt... Oh, the one thing I do want to mention, though, with the random... There are random encounters in this game as you go up and down the corridors. I will say... It felt kind of unfair with some of the random encounters. Like, we had, I think, pretty good luck in guessing through our way through there. And we did make our way with a map, so at least I knew where rooms were relative to one another to help speed up the playthrough a bit. Um, but I will say, I did find it kind of dumb that we literally were going through unscratched because the character's like, Oh, I'm in perfect health, I feel great! And then I make one mistake and I die from full health. That felt kind of bad. Especially when, like, earlier in the same playthrough, 
I got hit like two to three times in a row that didn't do anything to us. And I know we healed at multiple points throughout the game by befriending NPCs and trying other things. So that felt kind of bad. So the random encounters do add a bit of time to it. It, I don't know if it's like guaranteed the first time you play. We tried the same options on some enemies and some of them repeated just fine. Like for example, we fought uh, the rattling skeleton who were able to basically insta-kill. Yeah, he's literally feeling like I'm invincible, I'm incredible or whatever. And he just literally gets one shot by goblins. And I'm like, seriously? And then other fights you could kind of get through. So some of the random encounters feel a little unfair. Where like, again, sometimes you could just do something and it works every time. And then at other time it's like, oh, you're so silly. Even though you did that to avoid damage last time, you dumb player and it kills you. So I don't know. Not a fan of them, but we only fought like five or so, I think maybe six in the entirety of the theme. So that didn't super matter ultimately in the long run. If this had been a longer game, if this had gone to like 10 or 12 hours, absolutely, I would find it like grating and really annoying. But again, for the length of the game, it doesn't have to be perfect, I guess. You can save anywhere. It is a text adventure. So if you really want to see the other endings, I would say go for it. From my perspective, I saw what I wanted to see. I want this kind of as a bridge for uh, Chrono Cross rather than jumping into every possible avenue and ending in this game. And I think we achieved that tonight in one session, as well as in the final thoughts. So with that chat, I'm going to go ahead and say, I guess, goodbye to YouTube. And I guess we'll say maybe Chrono Trigger connection was the friends we made along the way. And I guess uh, one other thing I'll say is, I guess, see you in Chrono Cross. <laughs>